Hi everybody, it's Christina Mascari from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I'm going to be tackling a smooth finish on this big hutch. I'm going to be using a roller because I get lots of questions about that and I'm creating a custom color today. So if you want to see this makeover, just keep watching. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to get this mirror off. It just really dates this piece, and I have some ideas for a fun thing I wanna do on here. There's screws, so I think it's gonna be pretty easy to get off, so let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna grab the drill and see if we can make this go a little faster. <laughs> oh yeah, that's much easier. <laughs> that's gonna go a lot faster. Okay, cool. So I have plans for this, which I will show you later. So next step is I'm gonna remove the hardware and give it a good cleaning. I am not gonna reuse this hardware. I'm gonna do new hardware, so I'm just going to set this aside. So here's a little trick. If you can't get a drawer out, sometimes feel underneath, they're gonna have these little drawer stops and you just have to push it down to pop the drawer out. Okay, now that all my hardware is off, I am ready to clean. So I've grabbed my white lightning, mixed it in a spray bottle with some warm water. So I'm just gonna spray the whole piece and clean it really well. This guy's looking pretty dirty, so I'm gonna grab a scrubby sponge to help me get some of this grime off. I know cleaning is really boring, but it's such an important step in getting your paint to stick. It's also a really good time to assess your piece, see how it's constructed. Um, this has dovetail drawing, which is really nice, uh, makes it a really good piece. So when you're rinsing and cleaning, this is a really great time to see if you have a bleeder. And if you do, you're gonna see a lot of that stain, that brownish reddish stain on your rag. I'm not seeing that. So I'm not gonna have to prime this. So I'm gonna scuff sand my piece. Scuff sanding is not necessary unless you have a really slick piece, but it is just insurance. The more, scuff sanding is never gonna hurt, okay? It's just going to give you insurance that your paint is gonna stick really well. I have my surf prep sander, so I'm gonna do some sanding with a 220 grit sandpaper. If you don't have an orbital sander, you can just use a pad like this. This is a 220 and you can just rub it all over the piece very lightly. We're not stripping back the finish. We're just giving the paint some teeth to stick to. Okay, now that I've got all the flat surfaces, I have put one of my foam pads on my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray. This is really gonna help me get on those curves and in these little slats without damaging my wood. Okay, now that I've got all the scuff sanding done, I just need to remove this dust. So I'm gonna use a tack cloth. You can also use a damp cloth. You just wanna get all this dust off before you start painting. So I've been dying to try out this new feature that Dixie Bell has on their website called the Color Lab. The coolest feature I found is that you can go in and specifically pick which color you want. I found a color I really love on Instagram on someone's wall, and I was able to look that color up and find the red, green, blue ratio for it. So I can just plug that in down here. So I got 149 for red, I got 151 for green. And then for blue, I have 138. I'm gonna click yes. And here is my beautiful custom color I wanna do. It's a beautiful green. Okay, so it's a 40% burlap, 60% stormy seat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add eight ounces of my burlap and then I'm gonna add 12 ounces of stormy seas to make 20 ounces of paint. And that should be plenty for this project. I'm using this handy dandy a uh, canister that already has measurements on it. It makes it really easy when you're doing a custom color. You can get these at any hardware store. Um, you can also just use a measuring cup if you have that and just clean it off when you're done. Your paint is gonna be super, super thick when you open it. So you always wanna shake it and stir it until you get a really good consistency. Oh my gosh, yes. This is gonna be so pretty. When you're mixing a color, you wanna stir it really, really thoroughly and scrape all this stuff off the bottom and the sides just so everything is really incorporated. So now I have this beautiful sage green color. You can see how different it is from the Stormy Seas. It just lightened it up and added a little bit of warmth with that burlap. This is the exact color I wanted. 
So you guys have seen me do brush painting a lot and I have sprayed a lot and I get a lot of questions about, can I use a roller? And I always say yes, but I haven't really attempted it myself. So I'm gonna see how smooth of a finish I can get today by using a roller. I have a microfiber roller, which I have used before. And then I have a foam roller. I like them both, but I think I'm gonna go with the foam and see how that goes. If I don't like it, we can always switch to the microfiber. So in order to roll, your roller is not gonna get in every little crevice. So you wanna do a paintbrush and cut in and then roll on top of that. So I'm gonna be using my Dixie Belle mini angle. This is one of my favorites. The angle really helps you get in the detail and I have a paint tray all ready to go and I'm gonna line that with foil because I don't have paint liners. You could definitely use paint liners, but I always love lining my trays because it's just gonna save you on cleanup time. So I'm gonna cut in on these hard to reach places like around these little trim right here. I have removed the drawers because I think on this piece, it's just gonna make it a little bit easier. So I'm not globbing on paint because I'm gonna be able to smooth this out with the roller. I think I've cut into enough spaces, so I'm gonna grab the roller and hit up all the flat spots. So my roller is not gonna reach all the way to the ground, so this is the part where you wanna grab that brush and kind of feather out that area that you can't reach with the roller and then smooth it back out. This is just the first coat, so it doesn't have to be perfect. If you see wood coming through, that's okay. We'll hit it up on the second coat. One thing I will tell you, this is going way faster than hand painting, and it's definitely less prep than spraying, so those are two positives. It's always a good idea to take the drawers out if you can. You're just gonna be able to paint them better, and having them flat like this is gonna help them level out. Since there's so much detail work in here, I'm gonna try to get that first, and then I'll roll over the top. I sprayed all this detail work like this last time, and it turned out to be a huge mess. Uh, so I think painting these like this is gonna be the way better way to go. I had a lot of sagging, way too much paint went in here. It was not a good time. Okay, the first coat of paint is on. It's really dry. I'm liking the coverage. So I'm gonna let everything dry for about one to two hours. I have saran wrapped all my materials so that they will stay nice and wet and that paint won't dry up and I won't have to clean in between painting, which is my favorite thing. So what I'm gonna do off camera, so I'm not boring you guys, I'm gonna do my second coat of paint. Also to save you guys some time off camera, I'm going to do my first coat of my sealer, which is my favorite. You guys know the clear coat in flat. So I will catch you guys on my second coat of this. Welcome back for day two. Since you've seen me, I have put on my second coat of paint and I have also done my first coat of clear coat. And I also decided to take off the door. It just made it a little bit easier to paint inside here and I'm gonna cane it so it's gonna be easier to have that off. So if you are new to my channel, you might not know, but this is one of my favorite top coats. I'm gonna be using it today. It's the clear coat and it's in the flat. I think it's very forgiving. I'm gonna be using the same brush that I used to cut in on my piece. So let's get started. You might be asking yourself, why am I not using the roller on my top coat? Well, a roller puts on a lot of product and when you're doing top coat, you wanna do really thin multiple coats. The great thing about this flat is that it soaks right into the paint and you're not gonna see any brush strokes. So there's really no reason to use a roller here. This clear coat goes on really milky white. You can see it as you put on, but it will dry down to a very clear finish. It won't yellow. It'll be a beautiful matte finish. You never want to put something over paint that is oil-based because that will yellow. Definitely use a water-based product like this over paint. Now I'm keeping the inside of this cabinet the way that it is. It's in really good shape, so there's no reason to paint this. You're more than welcome to paint something like this. I usually just leave it because nobody sees it. If it's in good shape, just save your paint, save your effort, leave it that natural color. So for this drawer, I don't want the top coat glooping up in between these slats here. So I'm only gonna do the fronts that are gonna be touched. Everything else in here will be fine not having top coat on it.
For the top, since it's a flat surface, I really like to use these blue sponges to apply it. So I'm gonna pour some of my top coat into this canister. I'm gonna mist this guy, get it damp, and then I'll use it to apply the top coat. So when I'm using the sponge, I only get a little bit of product on here. I always wipe the excess off. And when you are taking it across here, you just wanna do really light pressure and make sure you're evenly applying the product. Do one long stroke across. And if you miss any spots, just go back over and do that again. And just look for any excess on the side and smooth that out. Okay, you might remember the mirror we had on here. I thought that dated it a lot. So I'm gonna take some of this Radio Weave cane and we're gonna put it in here. So this is already painted, two coats of top coat, already dry. So we're gonna flip this bad boy over and I'm gonna staple this on here, but first we need to soak the cane for 15 minutes in the bathtub. I want this whole thing submerged, so I'm just gonna weight it down with a plate so that everything's under the water. So I'm gonna let this soak for about 15 minutes. So I'm really lucky on this door because I have a really big lip from where that mirror was. So I'm just gonna measure how big my staples can be. And I have about three quarters of an inch so I'm grabbing a 1 4th inch stapler. So I know that's not going to go through my piece. That's really important. I've done that before. So check how much room you have and that when the staple is fully inserted, it's not going to shoot through the front. Um, I would love to be able to use my compression drive crown stapler because this is automatic. It's really easy to use, but I have tested it. And because of the safety feature right here, I can't get this close enough to get the cane in. So I tested out this manual one last night and I can get nice and close and it wasn't too hard to go through the wood. And I think this is probably what you're gonna have at home or you're more likely to have at home. So it'll be nice to show you how to use the manual stapler. Okay, I'm gonna start in the corner and I'm gonna work my way down, going either side, either side, either side. This is a little tricky. You just have to find out the best way that works for you. But you just wanna keep pulling this really tight and make sure that your cane is not sagging. Okay, I really love the hardware that I found. This is Liberty Classic Elegance Knob and it's in brushed brass. You guys know I love brushed brass, I'm obsessed with it. And I think they're really gonna fit the color and the style of this piece. The hard part is done, all the painting is done, the cane has been attached. So now it's time to put this thing back together. So I've got my gold gilding wax. I'm just gonna take this with a little artist brush and I'm gonna touch up these hinges to make them match my hardware. So I always get asked this question, how much paint did it take for a really, really big piece like this? I made 20 ounces of paint and I have about eight ounces left over. So I used 12 ounces on a huge piece like this. All right, this piece is finally done. Just to remind you, here is what we started off with and here is the after. I love the way this piece turned out. This custom color is gorgeous. I love the way the cane turned out. And of course I love the brushed brass hardware. My final thoughts on using a roller to chalk paint a piece. It wasn't my favorite. It definitely worked. It's smooth. It doesn't have brush strokes, but it's kind of got that orange peel effect. And I think you use a lot more paint when you use a roller. So it's up to you if you want to try this technique out. Thanks for being here, you guys. And I will see you next time.